Hey guys, Box Report 2 Scale Model Alberta. Uh, quick work in progress update for you guys. I'm working on uh, Trumpeter's uh, Soviet T64 model 1972. What a great kit. This is just, this kit rocks. This is one of the best, um, this, may, this is probably the best Trumpeter kit I've ever built. So we'll reach across here. And this is what we've got going so far. We've got the uh, running gear all painted up, ready to go. I get the wheels on it. All that kind of good stuff on there. And we've got all the um, road wheels painted up, metalized. I've been using this, um, the AFV painting system Russian Green. Um, right, everything right up to about uh, step number three I've done on this. It's great. I've just did an SU-100 I'll get some pictures of here shortly and uh, it's coming along really nicely. Um, this T64 is an extremely nice kit. I would highly recommend it if you can find it. It's a little pricey at about $62 Canadian. I bought it. You can probably find it cheaper online. I just went to the local hobby store and picked it up. I, I don't have the patience for buying models online so if, uh, if it's there I just pick it up. But this should be ready for, hopefully I get some tracks on it by tomorrow and maybe even the hull and the turret ready to go. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Later, take care. Hey guys, Saturday afternoon. And uh, work proceeds in the Soviet T6472. There's a couple of gotchas on this kit that you really need to be careful on. And um, found that out the hard way. I thought I had it beat. Um, first thing you go all, all the way back here to... Um, the first very step, you're putting B40, B31 and B30 together. These keys don't lock up worth a damn. Um, they're, they just, there's, there's room for air to have your teeth lined up, your sprockets lined up. So make sure you get yourself um, uh, one of these screws, you know, screws, one of the sprues with the tracks on it, line it up that way. I thought I had it perfect, but one was about a sixteenth of an inch out. And if these are a sixteenth of an inch out, they will bugger your tracks when you put them on. I had uh, just a bit of luck, uh, bad luck on one side, that the teeth weren't perfectly squared up, so it put me out on the top, but thankfully everything can be hidden underneath fenders on this kit. So that's what I ended up doing. I hid the, uh, the screw up, it was about a slightly crooked and about an eighth of an inch short on the one side so that's hidden by the fender so that's okay that's one of the gotchas the second gotcha is when you are building the um, front fenders you see that part right there G7 leave that off until you actually have the fenders mounted onto the body because there is just a little bit of play on there and if you don't have it perfectly level you're gonna be you're going to be a little bit tight right in there and you're going to be a little bit high right under there. So that one I mounted on first and we had a little bit of, uh oh, didn't quite fit. Whereas on this side I put the fender on and then mounted this inner piece and I was able to get it on there nice and tight, used the quick, ambro quick welding Ambroid Pro Weld and got that. So you have to be careful on that. Now here's another real massive major omission on this, um, on this kit. On step nine here, uh, you see these two little pieces here to mount the entrenching log. Well, absolutely nowhere in the um, instructions did they show bending or mounting these two photo etch pieces. I've got to track down to photo etch pieces. They look about right, but nowhere in anywhere up to these nine points are those pieces indicated to be folded and um, put onto the back of the rear hull plate. I knew that something had to go there because you can see right there there's some etchings in the rear plate, the rear hull plate, indicating that something definitely had to go in there. But like I say, these instructions don't show it. So um, with that in mind guys, make sure that you get those rear sprockets set up properly and make sure you actually, I would suggest cutting five or six or seven single tracks links together, wrapping around that rear hull, that rear sprocket, and then gluing it on tight. Otherwise you could run the risk of having just that sixteenth of an inch runabout 
and that will bugger you up when you're putting the tracks on. Now having said that, it only took me about not even an hour to get both of these tracks on, even with the problems I had in, uh, encountered on the one side. It, uh, it still mounts up pretty darn good and I'm happy with these colors. They look very proper for Soviet armor and the more I look at some of the older Soviet armor from the 70s, a lot of it was glossy, it was shiny. So I may leave this, I may just put a satin coat on it. So anyway, um, Saturday afternoon, I hope like heck I can get the turret done tonight. I may have to stop and watch some hockey, but you never know. So there you go guys, a couple of little gotchas on this T64 that you have to uh, check. Now I did go over and check my other T64 um, model 75 and the instruction sheet is virtually identical and it doesn't show putting those pieces of photo etch on either. So keep that in mind guys, but still all in all, this is still a really good kit and I, I would highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, later.